Sally's Aunt Fran is coming to visit, and Sally is freaking out a little. Sally, will you relax? It's just your aunt. John, my Aunt Fran isn't just an aunt. She's a legend. She was always sort of unreal to me. You know, she once sent me a Mongolian monkey. You're kidding. And once an actual hunk of the Sphinx. I didn't think they allowed that. They do if your date is King Farouk. And what does a child do with a Mongolian monkey? Aunt Fran's main hobby is marrying rich guys. I just can't believe she's coming. Honey, when someone sends a telegram from Australia, you better believe it. The part I don't want to believe is this, the ending part. Kangaroo to follow. I wonder what she expects them to do with a kangaroo. A police siren stops in front of their house. Aunt Fran has arrived. Thank you. <laughs> it is something that you have helped a foreigner to your country, and I am never forgetting of your kindness. Not at all, ma'am. Glad to have helped. You sure this is the right place? Oh, may we, of course. And there are whom to see I am coming. <laughs> Thank you. I wasn't expecting a French accent out of someone who came here from Australia. Oh, well, that silly man wanted to give both of my cabs a ticket, merely because I told the driver how anxious I was to see you. So instead you talked him into giving you a police escort, huh? It seemed an acceptable compromise. Eve Arden was well known from movies in the 40s and early 50s. Her move to television landed her the title role in the popular sitcom Our Miss Brooks and made her a household name. I know her from The Mothers-in-Law, a sitcom about two couples who have been friends forever, so much so that their kids get married and suddenly they're all related. She was known for playing wisecracking types such as this, mainly because she didn't have to do much acting. She was just as quick-witted and prone to snark as her characters. Let's hear more about Aunt Fran. And this must be John, because nobody else here is John. Yes, that makes me John. Hi, Aunt Fran. Oh, how nice. And I'm sure you'll take care of these gentlemen who aren't fortunately John. Oh, that's Winston. The rest of the animals are still in quarantine. Uh -huh. You'd think they'd tell you in the Galapagos that you cannot bring turtles into America. Wouldn't you, though? <laughs> I know you'll be generous, John. She had to get a second cab for her stuff, and that doesn't include the animals. Animals, plural. How many does she travel with? And if you're in the Galapagos, Fran, that's more likely a tortoise, not a turtle. She'd probably tell me, It has four legs and a shell, and it's not an armadillo, therefore it's a turtle. By the way, I'm not sure what's going on with the fade-outs. There are a couple more that I'll try to work around, but they happen in some weird spots, as you saw. It appears to be how the episode was recorded. Oh, that was absolutely delicious, Sally. And to think you did it all yourself. I didn't bring any servants this time. I, I prefer to travel more simply now. Yeah, your luggage does seem to reflect that. Oh, stop complaining, Winston. Mommy will feed you soon. I don't suppose you have any iguana meat in the house? Oh, I'm sorry. We ran out this morning. Well, perhaps I'm traveling a little too simply. And speaking of simple, may I introduce my brother Jerry? That wasn't very nice. It's true, but it's not nice to say out loud. Who takes a lot of abuse? Because he earns a lot of abuse. Want to chair? Jerry, I'd like you to meet my Aunt Fran. Hello, Jerry. Hi. This place looks like backstage at Let's Make a Deal. He may be simple, but he's not wrong. You see what I mean? Yeah, I didn't have to come here to be humiliated. I could have been humiliated a lot of other places. Oh, please stay. You know, a really good victim is very rare. No, oh, well. She already found a way to make him happy to be the butt of the jokes. Sally tells me you're a musician and you work in Las Vegas a great deal. Yeah, I do. I'm going up tomorrow. Do you by any chance know a Mr. W.W. Forrest? Wild William Forrest? Possibly. What does he do? Well, he's kind of a doctor's helper. If you owe the casino any money, he fixes it so you need medical help. That seems to bother her a bit. I get the feeling Wild William knows who she is, too. I wonder if I might ask you a favor. Yeah. <laughs> Would you answer the door and tell them my name is Carmen Kablotny? That's uh, probably more flowers. 
Is there ever a day when you don't get flowers? Oh, of course, dear. One has jewelry days. <laughs> Is there a Mrs. Fran Harrison here? Yes. Aunt Fran, it's for you. Later. Yes? Mrs. Harrison, how do you do? Simons. She's not concerned. She says, I'll put it with the others. Others. I'll get it. They need to start charging people to use that doorbell. This is some Japanese guy who has a message for Fran. We are most anxious to resolve our differences regarding the pearl bed. Oh, no more than I. Please inform Mr. Akimitsu that I shall ring him the minute I'm unpacked. This evening. Tuesday at the latest. <laughs> Arigato. Sayonara. John just told her he's a lawyer. Sounds like she could use one. It seems that she has an inherited interest in a, a pearl bed in the Orient. A what? Well, it's a pearl bed. Uh, but the title's unclear, and I was hoping that maybe you wouldn't mind if I looked into it. Just as kind of a family favor. He says, okay, you can do this favor on company time. Just don't gobble up too much of it. Sally comes in. I've already told John he can handle your aunt's business. Oh, good. Okay. Well, then one good turn deserves another. How about dinner at my house and you can meet my aunt? Sally? Yes. I learned early on after my divorce that blind dates are a lot like betting on the horses. The odds are stacked against you. <laughs> Just wait until dating apps, dude. You'll beg for the days of blind dates. I could fix you your favorite food. I'm sure that you love your aunt, but do you know how hard it is to make beef wellington? Beef wellington, I make it all the time as my specialty. He doesn't believe her. Now he declines because he thinks she's pulling his leg. You're missing a good thing. Your beef wellington? My aunt. Fran Harrison, I'd like you to meet Stuart Klein. How do you do, Mr. Klein? How do you do? For some reason, Henry Jones took a few episodes off and William Wyndham stepped in. He was well known and had just the demeanor for this role. You'll see what I mean. And you don't know how hard I'm resisting the urge to say, the party. Not only is dinner on, but he'll look into her matter himself. While Sally is doing that, Aunt Fran is visiting the store. And it's just as well that Sally isn't around. I just had a few pieces that I'm bored to tears with, and I thought you might be interested. I'd rather you didn't mention it to Sally. You know, she's so sentimental about family things. Are those real rubies? Are there any other kind? <laughs> Don't look at me. I'm not going to tell her. Still, the implications of this are pretty clear. Sally. You evidently do know how to make beef wellington. It was superb, especially the crust. Well, it was my girlfriend's recipe, Aunt Fran's crust. <laughs> Don't tell me you can cook, too. Oh, well, no, really, but one of my husbands could. His hobby was gluttony. Oh, foolish man, considering all the sins he had at his disposal. <laughs> John, see you tomorrow. Good night, Stuart. That went quite well. Mr. Klein is appropriately dazzled. You know, I have a sort of a feeling about Stuart. Oh? Yes, I think I might be going to marry him. But with Fran, the question is always for how long. Remember what I said her hobby is. John doesn't think it'll happen. He says Klein is a player. Hi, Angela. I got to see John, and I was wondering how I could forget what a beautiful girl you are. For my sake, try. You're still fighting it. Still winning. She swims in a whole different pond than you're used to fishing in, Jerry. He needs to see John right away. Well, there's never a dull moment. Mr. Klein took her out again. Marshall came with some sort of summons. We got a notice the kangaroo was held up en route. <laughs> but, and London called three times. London? What did London want? Oh, she forgot to pay her hotel bill for the royal suite. My dear. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling she didn't forget? Sally discovers the jewelry, but she doesn't know where it came from. Is it really serious between me, your aunt, and Mr. Klein? Well, I think she's serious. Well, I mean, is she crazy in love? Oh, well, I think she's serious. I assume that answers your question. Look, I don't know how to say this, but I really have some awfully funny vibrations. 
About my aunt? Let me put it this way. If, say, a perfect stranger did something and they said, don't tell your best friend, would you keep it a secret? Am I your best friend? Mm-hmm. Tell me the secret. She explains about the jewelry. That plus skipping out on the hotel bill add up to Aunt Fran is broke. Sally and John are comparing notes. Jerry just got back from Las Vegas and... She owes that much? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I hope we're both wrong. Well, could she? Just want to marry him for his money? Maybe she loves him. Klein? I don't know. I think he's kind of cute. That cute? Not that cute. <laughs> they have to know since they introduced these two and one of them is John's boss. Don't be upset, dear. Yes, it's all horribly true, but I wouldn't characterize myself as poor. You see, people like me are sometimes financially embarrassed, even broke but never poor. People as as venturous as she is will be up on top, down on the bottom, back up, back down like a yo-yo. Being broke is kind of like catching a cold. It goes away. How? Some way or other. <laughs> By marrying a wealthy man? Oh, I see. Yes, they are concerned because this time it could affect more than just Fran. Look, I don't mean to be disrespectful or to butt in. No, I mean to butt in. Sally. Yes. I never married a man I didn't like. Like? Aunt Fran, this is John's boss. And I think if you were to talk to any of my ex-husbands, you'd find they were eminently content. I saw a meme once that said, take away their money and they's just po folks. Not Fran. As I said, to an adventurous person, which is to say someone a lot more adventurous than I am, it's a game. You win some rounds, you lose some rounds, but you keep playing because it's fun. She likes this life. Another example is one of my personal heroes, Wyatt Earp. He made and lost at least four genuine fortunes. He died broke, but I see him as an embodiment of this. I see Fran much the same way while it lasted. Darling, cities don't last. Nations don't last. How can a marriage possibly last? For one thing, fewer people are involved to muck things up. For every person you add to any project, the muck-up factor rises exponentially. That's just basic math. John is trying to explain it to Mr. Klein as delicately as possible. Uh, all I'm asking, Mr. Klein, is whether my intentions are honorable. Very decent of you. Well, it's not only that, sir. I was thinking of you. Well, I understand your implications. I think very highly of your aunt, and my intentions toward her are... are, uh, appropriate. I'm sure they're appropriate for both their ages and marital statuses, and anything more than that is none of your business. They're adults, and they both seem to know what they're doing. Your concern is noted. I'm sure they are, sir, but do you understand that she's used to money? Well, if you're really that concerned, why don't you take over her legal affairs yourself? Well, settle this business of the pearl bed, and then she'll have plenty of money of her own. Ever get behind on your bills because a paycheck was late or didn't come at all? That's the situation Fran is in right now. With this inheritance thing tied up in litigation, she doesn't have access to the money it brings in. Her late husband's first will left her a minimum interest. A later will, I understand, leaves her considerable more. Uh -huh. Where is that will? Somewhere in Hokkaido. She doesn't know exactly where. Oh, that's, that's all you have, huh? After all the time you spent with her, you... let's just say that I was distracted. Hmm? They haven't been going on dates to discuss pearl beds and wills, John. Mr. Arkhamitsu, I've invited you here today in the hope that, well, in the hope that an informal atmosphere would help provide a solution to Mrs. Harrison's interest in the pearl bed. It is possible merely to conclude this matter, a token settlement might be offered. You'd like some tea, I'll get it for you. May I ask what the nature of that token settlement might be? Instead, he should be asking why Sally just turned around looking shocked. Uh, we're in luck, maybe. You heard about the tea? Yeah. Well, he didn't ask for it. He thought about it. 
You can read Mr. Akhmet's. What's he thinking? Well, that's where the maybe comes in. Right now, he's thinking... Yeah, right now he's thinking in Japanese, but when he talks with John, he thinks in English. Let's use that. Uh, Mr. Akimitsu, uh, Mr. Burton, my associates and I would like to offer a cash settlement. And I would like to discuss the terms of the new will. A new will? A new will has not been discovered. <laughs> they go into conference like this a lot. I would really like to know if the actors are actually saying anything related to the subject or if they're discussing somebody's new car. When you mentioned the new wheel, he got all excited. Good. When he gets excited, he thinks in Japanese. Bad. <laughs> that means the key is to keep him talking. <laughs> Not like that. We all know there's another will. <laughs> the only question is producing it. I suppose it is possible. Do you know where such a will might be? Well, I have a reason to believe that concentration will produce that answer. Just don't ask him how. You wouldn't believe him anyway. Concentration? Merely thinking about its location. And then once the new will is located, everything will be settled. If the new will is located, no one knows where it is. How about the First National Bank in Hokkaido, Vault Box 1407? Hey, look at that. Concentration works. He's got to take this back to his board of directors. Since John clearly has this guy by the will and testaments, their offer to buy Fryan out just got a lot bigger. Guess what? She's back on top. And you didn't believe her when she told you broke goes away. She's heading on to her next adventure. Mr. Klein is here to see her off. Oh, I'm still in time. Stuart, Stuart, can you ever forgive me dashing off this way? Duty calls and I'm devastated. It's the fate of all great loves. You will recover. I'll try. <laughs> but not too soon. No, not too soon. I'm good. Oh, for me. <laughs> Well, color me surprised, he's really feeling this. Uh, Mr. Klein, I'm, I'm sorry. You did just fine at the legal end. Must be kind of disappointing. Sally, I'm an old dog, and I do know all the old tricks. Believe me, I don't have a thing to complain about. <laughs> I'll just see our friend off on the plane and try and look suitably stricken she'll appreciate that <laughs> or not sure what's going on with the fade outs or the whistles he's just poor folks <laughs> I can say my own fake word.